Good morning and uh, welcome back to the Ohio farm. Wow, am I gonna shoot a basket in the dark? Nah, we'll, we'll come back later and do that. We were working pretty late last night, probably till about nine o'clock. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little embarrassed. I ran out of fuel in the middle of the field well, not really the middle of the field. I came over and I was right by the fuel tank on the farm. And I didn't stop for fuel. Turned around. Kept going. And uh, ran out of fuel. So that was kind of an expensive service call to have the... Uh, <laughs> fuel delivered out to the field at night but uh well had to be done i was gonna wait till today to uh collect on that contract to show you and i almost exited the game and then i remembered ah, if you've got a contract completed and you go out of the game and i'm not gonna bother testing it especially not with a 
$40,000 contract to the balance. Uh, if you've completed the conditions of the contract, don't collect on it and go out of the game. I think the game, you know, when you come back in, it just doesn't put that contract back in. At least that's what I believe. Experience has... Taught me, I think. I think I've learned that lesson the hard way a few times. I threw a hay bale in the back of the pickup here. I probably should have strapped it down, but I didn't. Heading over to the west place here. Got somebody behind me. I want to check on the uh, stave silo. It's a production. Uh, and I don't know if it's run out of grass yet or not. It has, so we're going to deactivate that. Okay. Um, so I'm here. Stop. Drop it. There we go. Could probably stand to feed the chickens. We'll come back and we'll do that later. So this is all the extra hay bales I had uh, from that part of the grass that I bailed last time, or a couple times ago, I guess it'd almost be now. We get paid really well putting grass bales in that uh, wildlife feeding station, or these hay, hay bales. I wonder if we can put grass in there. Um, gotta take a look at the capacity of my mixer wagon and see if I can do round bales in that. I think maybe I can. So yeah, we finished the contract on field 8 last night around 9 o'clock. Got paid nearly $40,000 for that. We've got the equipment parked over at the uh, next cotton field we have to do. Uh, sorry. <laughs> when you take cotton contracts just like the root crops, you kind of almost guaranteed playing at three times speed like I do that you're going to spend a month working on those contracts. There's two cotton bales in the back of the trailer. Left over from field eight. The cotton harvesters. <clears throat> Sorry. Cotton harvester is about half full. Uh, so that's all excess from field eight that we'll get paid for. I didn't deliver it um, here at the sell everything container because at the time, the best price was at uh, Ohio Agri Co-op, which is where the other contract delivers. So. And it was not insignificant. Oh, it did. It was not insignificant how much difference there was in the prices. Like a hundred dollars per thousand liters, and those bales are something like twelve thousand liters. So that's I don't know, like twelve hundred bucks. Uh, per bale. It's nothing to sneeze at. 
It'll pay for a service call out to the middle of the field <laughs> at night. <laughs> uh, so yeah, money was up at probably about 90000 Property maintenance and stuff hit us overnight and brought us back down a little bit. Actually, I should go feed those chickens now. Ah. We'll just play there's no morning dew and we'll get right on the contract. And <laughs> I missed just a little bit right where I ran out of gas and I picked up the header and put it back down. I was missed like whatever, six cotton plants, but didn't realize it till I went back to get the trailer and ain't no way I was gonna drive that harvester all the way back there. Oof. That's close. Uh, see what they got for used equipment. I'm checked out this morning. I looked last night when I got home, but hmm. pick up. Just kind of base bland. It showed up. I don't remember what we paid for ours. Uh, but yeah, ours showed up in this patina finish and we just bought it as it uh, appeared in the uh, store so yeah we got these two we could keep those and this is like half full he kind of lose it a little bit uh, when I'm time lapsing but I was trying to kind of showcase how this thing works. So it loads like four times this upper chamber here. And once it's full, it brings it down and it starts the bale, I think, down in this section here. And then it eventually builds a bale right back in this portion so it'll four times fill that add it to the bale then it'll come out and you can carry one on the back with you or you can set it to automatic drop I usually keep it on there let it automatic drop when the next one's ready to come out But it's it's pretty cool how it works you can see the cotton going inside uh, that chamber coming up from the the pickups here up there bolt I think whatever fan or whatever blows them up <clears throat> very cool uh, model. And this is a base game too. They do good work. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. So let's Probably wouldn't want to do this early in the morning like this, but <clears throat> these cotton harvests take so long. I don't want this to be the episode. <laughs> 
And if I don't start doing it now, I might run out of daylight before I can do anything else. He's, of course, that field, the other field that we did was so big. That's the main reason it took so long. So I said, I mentioned in the last episode, I usually like to put the deer on the steering wheel right in the middle with three rows to the left, three rows to the right. Now sometimes it looks like you're picking up an extra row. It's kind of dangerous because if you're setting yourself up like you visually see, like I do, and it appears like you got that other one, Sometimes you didn't actually get that other one, and you end up leaving crop there. I think you'd be safer to hire a worker to do it for you. But I'm kind of a cheapskate and don't want to pay them. I mean, helpers work best when they don't have anything they have to deal with. So nice straight fields, you know, you kind of make a box for them to work in. But sometimes the helpers go outside the box as we saw the other day with Mrs. Nebraska Jim and the OLC Radish. Thought we had defined the work area pretty well, but it turned out that uh, not really so much. But when it's just going straight back and forth, it's like, well, man, why would I want to pay somebody to do that? That's pretty easy. I could do that myself. Which is true, if you don't mind spending the time doing it. And I suppose every year... It's not so bad once a year. I get enticed by the reward of the how much these contracts doing root crop, you know, potato and sugar beet and uh, doing the cotton and sugar cane if there was any on here, but there's not. It's Ohio after all. But it rewards so much. It's like, oh man, I want that money. But yeah, it's putting in a lot of work, especially on big fields like a field eight we did over the last couple days, finished last night. I thought we had rain in the forecast for later today. Uh, I don't see it up there now. I thought I saw it last night when I was checking the weather, though. Well, maybe that'll appear later. That's another reason to get this done. Now. Oops. Missed a, quite a bit, I guess, on the edge. Let's back up some more. Am I getting them in reverse? Oh, it looks like I might be. No. It's, we do have crop destruction on, but the nice thing is it only destroys the crops in your field. So your neighbors don't get mad at you, and you don't lose crop uh, on your contracts. So this is much smaller field compared to the one that we did I don't want to hit that Baltra so what did it give us? it gave us 6 good, so we'll take 6 I'll come right in the middle here I'll run right down that there we go 
I was going too fast, which leads me to believe I didn't have the header down. And I bet I almost backed into the vaulter. Well, I can't see, can I? Can't see my mirrors either. There we go. Okay, let's get the header down. And over. Gotta be careful you don't get distracted. Pay attention to what you're doing. So I lifted the header, I gotta remember that. Near the road, turn my hazards on, so in case I'm back out into it. Or my beacon, rather. All right, header down. Oh, there we go. I thought I turned those off. Helps if you have the mini map up so you can see your heading.
Okay, we're finishing up the cotton harvest here. Missed a few here and there. Sometimes you wonder, is it really worth going back and getting it? Could you only get like about a liter from each plant, maybe? I don't know. Let's grab this one, see what we get. We're at 7.30 right now. 7.31. So, yeah. Let's go over here and see if uh, we get anywhere. It doesn't look like there's any. No. Okay. There's some over there we're getting as well. Not much. I mean, it's hardly worth going and doing, I would think. We'll lift the... So what did we get? One, two, three, and a partial. So when we deliver three, um, can I build a bale out of this? I don't know. Pull up the info screen, see what our options are to do with what we have in here. Okay, the help window. Hmm, I don't see anything. Oh, that sucks. I'm trying, you know, the, all the things that would normally, yeah, there's no point in even driving around and trying to get any more. So off of that field, we got maybe Two bales in. Two and a half. So we'll get this in operating position. We'll grab one. We'll go deliver them to uh, the Ohio Agri Co op. Right? And I think this delivery will probably be enough to complete the contract and for those final two bales i think we'll just get paid too bad you can't build a partial though you used to be able to well i think you can with the case uh cotton harvester just not this one Kind of a bummer. Isn't there a bale right over here? I don't want to hit it. There it is. So this contract, I think, pays around 4000 And then whatever we can get for two cotton bales on top of that, 
Could be good. It's uh, November. Last time I looked at the prices, they weren't really that uh, enticing quite yet. They should be coming up in the next few days, though. December, historically, has been the best time to sell wheat and barley, which is what we mostly have. And then January, February time frame. We have the sunflower that we got off the new field that we just bought. And that should bring in a good chunk of change. I'm not quite sure what to what to uh, think if buy more land. We need to get a milk trailer at some time sometime soon so we can start selling our milk. We'll need a slurry spreader. We do oh we already have a manure spreader. It's the big needs, yeah. I can't think of anything else. Alright, so we're arriving here. Ohio Agri Co-op here on our right. If you weren't here last year when we delivered uh, the cotton, you weren't watching this series back then, you have to drop it off just to the side of the grate for the, uh, for the silo. So I'd usually just try and back up right next to the fence here. Kind of aim to drop it right between the fence and that structure there. So 10 o'clock in the morning almost. 8% complete, 37% trans 75. And that should finish it. We got paid 10,000 on top of that. Ooh, so we should see, I don't know how much a single bale brings, but I guess we'll find out in a second here, right? We'll go get those two bales, bring them back here, and whatever we get paid will be two times what a single bale will pay, but I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we'll get north of 10000 apiece. I don't even know what the cotton price is. Well, I'm saying that could be another thing. I go out on a limb and say 25000 I think it might even be more than that. We'll see. So you can see, can you see just to the right of my bale, uh, my far bale, it's a little discoloration, like a little white in the field. So that's some that we actually miss. There's no point in going and getting that because we can't do build a partial bale, but that's how you can miss some. I think if we get over there, we won't see, we'll see that one single tuft but that other bit that we saw, I don't think we'd be able to get it all. As we get closer, that one will, that 
the row of will disappear. That single one stayed there, but there's some more that we missed right there, but it's so little it's not going to make a difference. So we'll get this one, and that's all we're going to be able to get. It's just a shame, <laughs> but I guess that's, that's the way it goes. Go back into transport position here. I'm interested. I'm going to hop out. And I'm going to turn on field info. I just want to... I think these are about 12,000. No, they're 10,000. Weighs two tons, though. Wow. So they're 10,000. Well, that's easy math, then. We can look at the price and figure out how much it's going to be. Just multiply 10 by the... That was a liter price. How much should we leave in the... We probably left about 3,000 liters in the harvester. So there is a mod by Agritono of the John Deere... Uh, cotton harvester which well, it's very expensive as is that one but you can get uh, we had that one the base game one has a six row picker header uh, it's got six row units And the mod and John Deere has these available too. If they're folding headers and they'll go out to eight and 12 rows. Which, if you're going to do it a lot, and I would even almost venture to say at all, <laughs> it'd be worth having the 12 row. Man, you could do it in half the time. Because it just took. Absolutely forever. I'd say the better part of two full days to do those two fields. I mean, that field by the by the machinery store was not bad. It took us what? Not even not even three hours. But the other one, oof, with the rain interruption and so on, man, it was brutal. So yeah, we'll go over $100,000, which would be nice. Oh, sorry. It'd be nice to be over $100,000 again. Hopefully no, nothing too enticing will show up in uh, used equipment. Heck, if a milk trailer shows up in there or a slurry spreader, uh, that would be not only tempting, but something we do need, actually need. Not just something we could use, but something that we actually need. All right, so this should be big money. This will be interesting. Um, my guess is about 25000 I haven't looked at the price. I'm just taking a wild guess. Um, it's probably going to be less. We'll see. Oh, 22,000 per bale. 23,000 practically. Oh, my God. <clears throat> it's so worth the pain. Where's the truck? Truck's back at the store. So, yeah. Uh, back to the machinery store where we got the pickup parked and collect on this contract. I was going to jump the gun and collect on it here and 
I'd be stuck here. I'll see you at the store in a minute. Okay, we're arriving at the machinery store here. With our borrowed Valtra and trailer. They call it a module trailer. Do they call those round cotton bales? Do they call those modules? I've got to park it here. I think they do. Let's check used equipment, then we'll check see what they call that trailer. Still got that pickup. Tempting. Okay, cotton technology. They call that a module for maybe they that's what they do. Okay. Nothing we can use. I'm pretty sure there's no contracts. Now let's stand in the shade here. Um, and collect on that contract. Oh, that's a big cultivating contract. Let's collect. Yeah, it was only 757. We made that back. Off field eight. You know I'm going to do it. You know already I'm going to do it. I couldn't help myself. I'm going to put a worker on it. Why not? How big is this thing I got back here? I don't know. I'll go around once and put a worker on it and <laughs> see what happens, right? It's like $30,000 for not doing anything. This is how you do big fields. I am not good at these articulated tractors, though. Mainly because I don't do big fields. I was asked in the comment section of one of the older Ohio Farm videos what I thought the best U.S. map was. Whoa. I'm not sure I have a good answer for that. 
I don't do the big field. If I did the big field and was good at the big equipment and stuff, it would probably be different. I like this map, but it's got a lot of limitations. It doesn't really take advantage of a lot of the stuff FS22 brings, you know, productions, all that stuff. But uh, visually, it's a great map. The uh, farms, farmyards, and the buildings and stuff are excellent. I liked Griffin, Indiana in FS19. I have not gone on it in FS22 at all, but I really, that was a pretty cool map. The, the town was well done. I, I had been setting up a Let's Play on it that I never really officially started. Uh, that would have been fun, but never happened FS22 came out I also was kind of got out of the habit of playing the game for a while um, I, I think I what's the New Jersey one like East Vineland or something I haven't looked closely at it. It looks pretty good. Then there's a North Carolina one that looks pretty good. Iowa Plains would be nice if you're into the big farm and the big equipment. I mean, I suppose it'd be okay if you started with millions of dollars, you know, because... Oh, just doing the contracts without big equipment to try and make the money to buy the big equipment. I don't know. Maybe take out loans, which is fairly realistic. Yeah, as a farmer's dude, take out a loan earlier in the year and pay it back when harvest time comes around. I tell you, the larger equipment, it's a skill I don't have. <laughs> wow. And the articulated tractor, it's certainly something I need to aspire to. Uh, oh boy, is that going to hit that? That's going to be close, so close. <laughs> uh, definitely something I need to aspire to someday. Maybe if you now one of these tractors becomes available and use equipment when I'm a little more comfortable with how we're established and how things are going. Maybe go out on a limb and buy one, but be nice to have something a little bigger than what we have. It takes quite a while for what we do have. We're about right sized for the size of our fields, but to do these bigger fields, yeah, our stuff is not quite big enough. I've never cultivated one of my own fields. I've never used my own cultivator yet. It's crazy. So what happens when you have a direct drill. Oh, we will use it for the first time, probably, on our oil seed radish, right? Try and get out of the way here. Did I get out of the way? Not fully. 
All right, there we go. Good enough. Go get the truck. Love to have a Dodge Challenger, but yeah. So, how do you make them out of one? All right, we're going to head to the West Place. We're going to give the chickens some grain. figure out what else might need to get done. Now, I don't often hire workers to go do jobs and just kind of leave them to their own devices. But this cultivating contract pays so much that it's worth it. he doesn't. I wonder how he's going to mess that up. place want to feed the chickens and just kind of look around and see what's going on over here I left the building open why did I do that it's odd did I leave that open I must have So the question is, um, do I keep feeding the deer my hay bales? Because I'm out of my extra ones. Time for today's lesson in backing a dolly trailer. Slow, slower, and small adjustments. Oh my God, I did it. 
<laughs> Visually, it was probably a little too far away, but it, I was on the trigger. That never happens. Oh, I got that on tape. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe that worked. Okay, so how big are the round bales of hay? I'm going to need field info screen, aren't I? All right. So they're 9,000 liters. Oh, that's way too big. I These are the big, big ones, right? Yeah. I made those too big. The smaller ones... Might could work. Got 11,000 liters. I got a full thing of milk if I wanted to. If I had a trailer. What's the size, the capacity of my mixer wagon? I, I want to say it's around 12,000. So if that's 9,000, huh, let's take a look. So yeah, 12,000. So nine out of 12 is like what? Three fourths. So if I put one of those bales in, three-fourths of it would be hay. Yeah, I can't use those. Those are just going to have to be for the field, for the pasture. And then I guess... Um, next time I get a round baler, make, make s the smaller rounds. The smallest size ones, and then I could use those. Things are things are going well. I can't believe we're sitting at almost one hundred and fifty thousand dollars right now. We haven't even sold our crop yet. That's going to be so nice. Oh shoot! It's lunchtime. I'm gonna go grab some lunch. Let's see what. Mrs. Nebraska Jim made me. And if it's time for lunch, probably means it's time for us to end the episode. I appreciate you hanging out with me here at the Ohio farm. I know you have a choice with how you spend your time and your time is valuable to you. I appreciate you spending a little bit of it with me. We'll see you next time.